Awesome. Um, all right. Well, thank you everyone for coming uh, to our weekly Purple WRT meeting. Uh, always great to have a good turnout. Uh, as always, the meetings are recorded. Um, we post them online for people who, uh, who weren't able to make it um, so they can keep up. Um, so introductions, uh, I think everybody in this call knows everybody. I could be wrong on that. Um, but uh, the first thing um, after that is board farm status. Um, the, there are a couple interesting uh, uh, things that were that came up this week. Um, uh, I, the board farm modifications, I don't think I've done anything with. I did a little bit of work on Ansible today. Uh, those are both going to be moved to the Purple Foundation GitHub since they're pretty much what we're running on the board farm. Um, I'm going to be getting some more hardware, um, so uh, I have approval to do that. So we're going to probably add two more boards to get started um, and then uh, see where things go from there. Um, Can I we still ask, have that though, open. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just curious what uh, hardware you're going to add out of curiosity. Uh, we have we have two more boards uh, from Qualcomm. Um, ideally, we would have uh, one of those would be a, we would use a Qualcomm board and then add preferably somebody else's as well. So we, it's a little more diverse. Um, but that actually is uh, something that uh, I was going to bring up in this call. Paul, uh, you had mentioned that you had wanted uh, to get the CI40 in the board farm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, although, come to think of it, uh, I think we I think there's some steps before that. I don't think we can just chuck you a CI40. Okay. Um, okay. Because, yeah, I think, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine, I think we are currently forking, um, well, clearly open WRT, you've got our own version, which we're going to upstream at some point. So obviously open WRT mm -hmm. support on CI40 is going to need to be upstream before we can give you a CI40. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. So then we will probably use uh, both those uh, um, boards uh, from Qualcomm. Uh, Hauke, uh, you may not be the person to ask, but I mean, there are ones from Lantique that would be uh, appropriate to add to the board farm? Do you think uh, we have some boards that are supported upstream. Uh, I can ask around if you can uh, get someone yeah. so to do this, we can ship it to you in the U.S. or how it's the process going? Yeah, just ship it to me in the U.S. and then I uh, plug it in and uh, and get it running. Okay, yeah. and you can make sure that Wi-Fi is deactivated so we don't have problems with FCC and so on. Yes, uh, the the Wi-Fi the the antennas are all um uh are disconnected um for the ones where. I need to actually add some uh, terminators on the connectors just so we don't have to deal with with uh, any Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, yep. So. Hey, hey okay, David. Yeah. I also have a yep. Bicol uh, T platforms board uh, earmarked for the board form. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I uh, asked uh, Cesare about that, so we're gonna I'm gonna be getting that um, as soon as we can. So uh, it, it's it's really coming together and it's it's pretty fun and that actually brings up the early success that i wanted to mention uh that i stumbled on yesterday um we were doing automatic builds of uh of um using jenkins for the uh uh trunk on open wrt uh and uh it was not booting um on the uh on the board we have and I assumed that with because the board farm is still very new, I was assuming, oh, this must have been something I did. I, I was going to analyze it. Um, and we caught that about uh, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, my time. Um, and, in, and about three hours later, somebody emailed the OpenWRT list saying that their board was not booting as well. And it was uh, the commit done in R49325. Uh, uh, so there was actually a problem, and we did catch it ahead of it. Um, uh, it, it just, I assumed it was actually something I end. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I, I thought that we're, you know, it, it just shows that, you know, this, this is going to work and that we're going to get some, some good things like that. So um, kind of an early success that I'd like to, uh, we can build upon. So we can kind of yay for that. Yeah, that's um, pretty cool. The other, it is very cool. It was very cool. I was, I was, I was pretty happy. I'm like, man, this actually is working. It's doing what we want. Um, 
Other thing uh, is I'm going to set up an IRC channel for board farm. That's been on my list for all week, but I just haven't had time to do it. But it seems like like a logical thing that we have an IRC channel available um, for people who are either wanting to use board farm or learn more about it and, and things like that. It's the kind of common thing in open source. Hey Eric, hey Eric, about that IRC channel, do you plan to post uh, the results of the of the build, whether it's a success or a fail? Because that, um, that would be useful for people. That would be useful for people to immediately read that whether a specific build has failed or succeeded. Yeah, we can do that. Um, we it's on the Jenkins server uh, right now, um, and we're still getting it kind of formatted the way I want and. And making sure that it's grabbing the right stuff, but yeah, we can we can certainly do that. Um, post want, on IRC or list or wherever. Yeah, I was going to mention um, you could have uh, Jenkins can do this too. It can send out an email when it's done, mm -hmm. and you could just send out that uh, results.html file. Like, I guess maybe you got to set up a mailing list of you know whoever is interested can subscribe and and uh, get your automated results. Absolutely. Yeah, I think either of those would be would be perfect. Um, I'm I'm open to whatever idea that that people think is best. Um, I'm not quite to the point where uh, I'm I'm ready to do that yet. There because right now we had a a build failure and it didn't actually it wasn't actually a failure. It just didn't grab the right files. I had it in, uh, grabbing the wrong directory. So um, I don't want to get too many uh, uh, f you know false negatives or false positives. Um, but yeah, definitely. We can do that. I think that's absolutely yeah, what we so maybe, want. Yeah, I liked how getting the automated emails when I was at QCA, getting their board farm status. So you could set it up and then just have it sending to yourself first for a while and yeah. then add a distro list or whatever. Well, that's a good idea. A board yeah, farm. So we'll need a board farm uh, mailing list for people who want to subscribe to get the notifications. Absolutely. Definitely. We can do that. I will do that. All right. Anything else with Board Farm that other people have been working on? I had uh, somebody from another department come over. Uh, well, we work reasonably close, but not not so close. We're working day to day, and mm -hmm. they've um, they've mentioned a whole bunch of updates that they did on their fork of Board Farm and say, "Oh, we need to uh, <laughs> we need to get these um, organized somehow." Um, I'll Absolutely. try and find out a bit about it before next week, but it sounds like I've done quite a bit of work. And you know, you were mentioning before the separation of the tests, for example. Yep. Um, that he mentioned that too. So let me get some more details and uh, over the week. We'll awesome. Yeah. <laughs> there isn't there is an open issue. It's uh, issue fifty three. Um, I can email that list because it's it's just in my it's right here. We would like uh, to get a sense of what are the things that. Uh, people think should be separated out into its own repo or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Test is the obvious one, but there's probably there may be others. I, I don't know. So get as many many uh, ideas as possible. Sure, awesome. That's great. Yeah, that that's awesome. Um, I guess the next thing uh, probably is funding open WRT projects. Um, we are. Uh, the proposals are, um, you can submit them and, um, through uh, next Wednesday. Um, really encourage people. I mean, uh, there's no project I think that's, uh, that's too small or, you know, it doesn't, doesn't have to be, you know, rewriting the world. It can be, uh, you know, small things that you think need to be changed. It can be related to obviously OpenWRT, but, you know, even, even support things like Board Farm or, you know, whatever, something, anything that can, you know, improve the community um, with a, you know, certainly a particular focus on, on the needs of, for carrier grade uh, OpenWRT, but that is not a required focus by any means, just a, um, a small preference. So, um, yeah, we are, we're, we're certainly welcoming proposals. Um, the instructions for that have, I, have been sent to the mailing list and I forgot to add a link to that in my slides. Um, but it is on the wiki, and I'll I'll email that out. So, and and we have at least we we know we have one pr one uh, presentation next week. Uh, we're going to do the presentations for uh, of the uh, proposers people are proposing. So uh, next week, um, we're gonna we're gonna have people just do a uh, 
short presentation question and answer to give it so everybody gets a sense of you know what what are they proposing and you know is it is it does it make sense does does the does it technically uh, is it going to cause any problems anything like that um so get feedback and things like that kathy i know you've been uh, you've been you've been kind of heading this one up any other uh, thoughts on that no i just i'll put it in the notes for this meeting to people can still submit your ideas like you said big or small um get Absolutely. them in and take a look definitely we're, we're we're excited to uh to get as many ideas as possible and hopefully fund as many cool projects as possible um any questions about that all right um on uh regulatory update uh not a ton i uh, i believe the fcc um came out with their um transition plan i believe it's called for transitioning um different uh excuse me uh devices to the new uh you know regime of rules uh it was kind of over my head uh, it was very uh, le legally intensive, um, but it that I do know that they came out with that, and I haven't really had a time to really work through it. So that's that's all I've got there. Uh, Open WRT Summit. We had a great planning committee meeting this week. Um, I, I think anybody who was there would agree. A lot of discussion about um, places we could have uh, the summit. Um, the there were some. Uh, proposals uh, on the mailing list earlier, the idea of, well, what if we had one at Battle Mesh? And I think uh, Purple is, is certainly open to the idea of, um, of funding one at Battle Mesh next year. That's, uh, we, you know, we have to obviously get the budget and, and things for that, but it's it's certainly not, doesn't seem like it's uh, out, of, out of the realm of possibility or, or unlikely. Uh, as for this year, um, the question, the, the question was, is there going to be an effect on um, how we, uh, what kind of turnout we get from various members of the community, whether they be industry or the core team or anything like that. Um, so the two discussions were, were strongly towards uh, Berlin at ELCE or Prague, um, f which uh, with CZ Nick, uh, providing a supporting role, which would be very helpful. Um, I, 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 it seemed like there was, it was kind of, the committee's kind of split right now. Um, we're still trying to figure out, get some answers to some questions. Uh, Hauke and, and, um, uh, and Kathy were, are going to talk to some of the core team to be, to try to understand uh, what their, um, what effect this decision would have and how we can encourage the core team to uh, to come to the event because the value increases significantly the more of the core team we have, certainly. Um, another question that was asked was um, how many people came to ELCE or came to the OpenWG Summit last year uh, um, based upon the fact that it was uh, co-located with ELCE? Uh, my, our gut reaction is probably about 50%, but we're not quite sure. Um, I'm going to ask the Linux Foundation for numbers on the number of people who, uh, signed up for OpenWRT Summit as like an add-on, um, because that will give us at least a little bit of a number, but it's certainly going to undercount the total. Um, but that, it gives us something to work off of, I think. Um, I think we kind of had a, a sense that we want kind of a, to vote on this in about two weeks, if possible, um, as to where the location is. But I think that's partly dependent upon, um, you know, what sense we get from the core team on, on their needs and uh, and what role um, would be best for making this a, 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 a some of the yeah. meets their needs. Yep. Eric, do you want me to copy the notes I took from the OpenWT Summit plan? call yesterday and copy them into this notes that goes out to the broader purple WRT list? Sure. I don't okay. see any problem with that. Because okay. yeah. um, I, I think one of the key things we came up with was what exactly can we do to attract 
core team members and especially mm -hmm. core team members that there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there's this rift going on and obvious, you know, the elephant in the room is the lead open over tea and what, what could we do to bring people together better is the question I have. And so I'd like to see the core team members plan this thing together and you take advantage of it, use it to build a stronger community. Mm -hmm. Um, find ways of instituting processes so they don't have uh, political and personal battles that that uh, hamper the program, the project. Mm -hmm. So that was one of Hauke's main um, things. And we can go to the other Open Liberty members and say, hey, what, what could the Open Liberty Summit, how could it be structured? Could you guys step in and plan the agenda and the talks and the discussions that need to be had? and keep in mind how to increase the relationship with core teams and and industry because mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of the core team they are part of industry as well you know some of them so or advise and everything like that so build those relationships strengthen those relationships and mm -hmm. instead of you know be seen, being seen as an outsider get them engaged to to make it happen mm -hmm. And then it's either, if it's at Berlin, then the Linux Foundation supports the logistics. If it's in Prague, then uh, CZNIC supports the logistics. So mm -hmm. in either either of those cases, we have a pretty good uh, foundation for people. You know, the core team doesn't have to feel like they have to do all the heavy lifting of food and mm -hmm. scheduling and all that kind of stuff. They just have to focus on the content and the, ex mm -hmm. you know, what gets, try to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good description of, of the discussion. I mean, is there anything else that people uh, want to talk about regarding the Open WT Summit or the planning committee meeting this week? Any questions? Okay, cool. Um, uh, Paul had. Paul had mentioned um, and that, you know, I brought up that, that Kathy had sent the email last week about how can uh, how can Purple's members, particularly semiconductor members, be more uh, focused on the on on how to work better with the community. Um, and one of the ideas was the purple stamp. Uh, this is like something that we've we've discussed on and off, I think, over as long as Purple's been around. Um, but it's always been a really difficult uh, discussion on like, how do you actually go about doing this? Um, so, I mean, Kathy, would you want to summarize kind of the discussion and, and what your thoughts were on this? Sorry, I had to pull my headphones off for a second. Can you say that again? Yeah. Oh, the you had sent that email last week about purple stamp and kind of organizing oh, by oh, IoT yeah. segment. And, you know, kind of would you want to discuss kind of what your thoughts were on this and we can go from there. Oh gosh, yeah, I have to remind myself. I um, can I can I do this uh, well next week? I have to actually jump in my car and go to IoT World. Okay. So, yes, um, we can we can talk I'm about connected this next to my week. computer, so I need to close it up. Okay, but, uh, sounds good. Yeah, so I, I don't want to cut it off too short, but yeah, just you can just highlight what I what I mentioned in my email, but yeah. uh, maybe I can prepare something better for next week. Okay. I got it. I got to jump off the call. Sorry guys. Awesome. No problem. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah. The, one of the, one of the things that Kathy brought up was, um, and this has kind of been discussed in purple for a while. It, it, it was always the, the difficulty of trying to figure out the right way to go about doing it um, is basically uh highlighting boards and devices that are kind of recommended um, for uh, the use by, o uh, by IoT devices for particular segments. Um, particularly say that they have to have their um, hardware, their, their software upstreamed and it has to uh, you know, pass the test in the board farm and, and things like that. Um, so yeah. Eric, the reason the reason why I was interested in this is because, I mean, how familiar are you with the Creator Project? I'm doing. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's 
although at the moment it's kind of limited to a board that we create ourselves, but we also have mm -hmm. some constrained devices, which, well, they don't run OpenWRT, but, you know, um, they are involved in that creator brand, if you like. And mm -hmm. I think we're keen on trying to expand that to, to a way of sort of saying, well, if I want to um, develop something IoT, um, I can go to the creator page and see what hardware is available and, and maybe have a bunch of, you know, selection criteria for, okay, I, I want it to be you know, device aware. I want it to be a hub or a, or a, um, a node or whatever you want to call it. Um, mm -hmm. And start to, I'm just wondering how much this overlaps with what we're already pushing for. And if, if it's been a discussion that's been going on for some time, I mean, this is the first time I've heard anything about it, so it's new to me. Um, yeah. And if there is overlap there, then there might be a whole load of, you know, previous barriers um, that stopped us from getting anywhere with this um, might be overcome by collaborating somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, there is, uh, this is Art again, there is a write-up that was done. Um, actually, Eric, you drafted it over a year ago. And so um, some on the Imagination team, uh, Ian Oliver and others, had, had reviewed it. The real challenge was not hardware from imagination. It was to mm -hmm. ensure that a bunch of other vendors contributed hardware as well. So that, mm -hmm. um, I think that was really that, the obstacle. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I think that imagination are trying to take, you know, are trying not to have to do their own hardware. We don't really want to do that. We, we'd much mm -hmm. rather have a, um, you know, a, a, a brand, if you like, or, or a, a place people can go to just start looking at, other people's solutions and say, well, what do I need for my IoT and what supports mm -hmm. what? Um, so at the moment, although it's limited to our own hardware, there's definitely a push to say, well, we don't really want to be doing our own hardware. We want to be um, getting other people's solutions involved. So mm -hmm. maybe there's a maybe there's an overlap there. Maybe there isn't. I just thought I'd ask Kathy to to uh, go through it again, but maybe next week. So why don't we plan yeah, on that, and definitely. then Kathy can, Kathy can also refresh the proposal that uh, Eric, you and she had drafted previously. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a, I, Art, I, you totally agree that you know it's the, it was been trying to figure out the actual way to get the get the hardware in that from as many mm -hmm. people as possible, and it's just a real difficult. It, it's it's balancing what's the proper set of requirements, and then. Mm -hmm actually getting people to submit hardware and it's it's just a it's a it's a difficult one but i think it's something we need to look at definitely long term and, and it's gonna it's it's a little bit easier now i think because we actually have board farm available that we can actually do the testing side of this because that was one mm -hmm. thing it was kind of like well we're going to do testing but it was kind of in the we have a sense that we're going to do it but we don't know exactly how we're going to do it now we actually have a way of doing it um and i think that is very that that gets us part of the way there, at the very least. Hi, it's Jeremy here. I, yep. uh, Art, you mentioned that the so there was something that had uh, been sort of floated around uh, a year ago. I must admit, I hadn't. Yeah, I I wasn't aware of this, and so certainly, um, I'll have a chat with uh, with Ian to see whether he uh, he remembers it. I I suspect that it is definitely a case of time and a, a time and a place yeah. back then maybe there was uh yeah it just it just didn't fit so well but i think as paul says there's i think there's two things that seem to be aligning and this it would be well worth resurrecting this um as you say eric the having some, the sort of the the board farm now as some way of at least the sort of a standard testing to be able to okay, put some kind of stamp of uh, open approval. Mm -hmm. um, and as Paul says, we're, what we're trying to do is sort of say, well, how, how, do you, how do you have a place to go to that says, okay, if I'm looking at, for some bit of hardware that can give me this kind of functionality, um, knowing that there's sort of one place to go to. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and if your sort of your, your, your bench or your starting point is, I'm looking for something that's running open WRT, but is geared towards these kind of features. This mm -hmm. could be a really good fit. Yeah. 
So well, I, think and, an ex- I think it's an excellent time to resurrect it. Um, yes. So I think it'll be a great, great discussion to have now, now that we have the infrastructure starting to go in place. Mm. Absolutely. And, and the other thing which you might not be aware of is that we've been working hard on a LWN to M implementation, which is operating on OpenWRT. Um, and that kind of fits into the you know, device management and everything else that you need with, with IoT. So oh, okay. cool. that also wouldn't have been there a year ago. You know, things have changed. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I th- yeah, we'll definitely have to have to bring this up both in, I think, here and then in a general sense, um, whether it's a separate group over time or whatnot. But yeah, awesome. Well, I'm glad to see that that this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that next week. Okay. Um, definitely. Oh, I just wanted to uh, a reminder that the OpenWRT Summit, the planning committee, was uh, probably going to meet, meet again next week. It depends. Uh, if we get actually any more information um, before then on the questions we had asked. If we don't need the meeting or we don't have anything new, then we won't have it. But the plan is uh, same time next week for uh, just as an advisory. Okay, um, any other um, uh, any other discussions that uh, people want to uh, bring up about uh, Purple WRT or anything in this area? Not from me. Awesome. Well, um, I want to thank everyone for joining, uh, and I'll see you again uh, same time next week. Thanks, Eric. See you. Awesome. Goodbye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Catch you next week. See you.